Hey there friends and enemies, Joper here again and today I want to talk about my starter build in Remnant 2 that I use to carry me through Survivor and Veteran difficulties. This thing is pretty much easy mode, especially someone like me who is newer to the Remnant franchise. I actually barely played Remnant from the Ashes, it's something that I'm going to go back and do now that I've jumped into this game so deeply, but... This is not the type of game that I normally play, so as I was getting used to it, having this build made life so much simpler. So, jumping right in, I'm running Handler as my prime archetype, with Engineer as my secondary. The reason I love Handler as my primary is because I am able to get that self-res. It keeps me alive and has helped me more times than I care to admit. Sometimes it's carelessness, sometimes it's just getting frustrated and not getting the timing down, but there are bosses who I have been able to kill on my first go around because I'm able to self-res before I understand the attack patterns and everything. As far as the skills, I am running Guard Dog. This helps me stay alive with the, the damage reduction. If you are not worried about staying alive, you can swap that to Attack Dog. It really doesn't make a massive difference, but it does help out. Then as far as my turrets go, I am running the Vulcan. Reason being, it's the most versatile. There are bosses that the flamethrower just will not hit because they're just moving around far too much. And there's other bosses that the impact cannon won't hit because they stay too far away. So if you're playing at range, the impact cannon just doesn't do a lot to help you out. That's a close range thing for sure. So that's why I stick with the Vulcan, even though it is the very first of the archetype skills. You can swap that out if you want to, but that's just what I've learned over the course of my playthrough. As far as the weapons that I have, I do have the Nightfall. This gun is tremendous. If you have it, use it. While it can be a little bit frustrating at times because it is a single shot, it only has 10 rounds in the magazine, the mod more than makes up for it. It's absolutely tremendous. I did also throw the extender mutator on there as well because this increases the magazine capacity. So as you upgrade that, you're going to get bigger and bigger magazine. It does make a world of difference. And at level 10, it increases your reload speed of this weapon by 15%. So that's absolutely massive. But where this gun shines is going to be the Dreadwalker perk. Enter the Nightmare Realm, Nightfall gains infinite ammo, 35% fire rate increase, 10% lifesteal, which is insane, and becomes fully automatic. The wielder becomes significantly harder to hit while moving, disables other weapons and skills for the duration or until Dreadwalker is deactivated. Now, that last part is key because you can't use other skills or anything like that, but what you can do, and what I found to work the best for me personally, throw down a turret, and then I'll swap to my handgun. I have the MP60R, which is already pretty nice. It is an SMG that I really, really enjoy, but I put on there the mod Fog Gazer. Calls forth an Eye of Legion to gaze at player's aim target. For every 0.25 seconds, Fog Gazer focuses on a target within 25 meters. A stack of madness status is applied for five seconds. Each stack deals 8.3% damage per second. Max 10 stacks last 30 seconds. Now, while you can't use other skills while Dreadwalker is activated, what you can do is have down your turret and use your Fargazer in order to have that active while you are using Dreadwalker to stack damage. And the damage output is absolutely insane. So ideally what you would want to do is drop down a turret, use your Fargazer, and then use... Dreadwalker. Now, if you're having problems staying alive, you might want to throw, throw down your turret first and then use your Fargazer a little bit later and then use your Dreadwalker because that lifesteal is insane. You're going to see in some of the footage that I absolutely just tank damage. I don't even worry about taking anything because I'm out healing it with the lifesteal. Life steal. That's how much damage that I'm regenerating there. It's crazy. So I think Getting the rotation down takes a little bit of time once you understand how you want to use this. It is a insanely effective combination. Also on my MP60, I have the Harmonizer Mutator, which increases mod damage by 19%, and at level 10, generate 25% additional mod power for stowed weapon. So that's going to be for my Nightfall. So it's just absolutely crazy. The combination you can throw on with those is is insane. It works so well, and you can absolutely melt bosses. Yes, you might struggle at times against uh, full ad clear, but oftentimes you won't because all you have to do is pop down your turret. There are times with my turret and my dog that I don't have to shoot a single bullet and I can clear an entire room. So 
it's crazy. It's a great combination, and I really, really enjoy it. As far as my amulet, I'm running Indignant, indignant Fetish. Taking damage from enemies increases all damage dealt by 25% and reduces all incoming damage for 10, by 10% for 20 seconds. That's kind of crazy, and it's one of my favorite amulets. I will switch that up eventually as I get more items. Like I said, I don't have everything in the game, so this is just what I'm using currently. Then I have the Shard Banded Ring. Increases mod damage by 12%. Massive. Stone of Balance Ring. Increases all damage by 7%. Kinetic Cycle Stone Ring. Increases mod and skill cast speed by 20%, which, trust me, is very, very useful. And then finally, we've got the Encrypted Ring. Using a mod regenerates 10% of max health over 10 seconds can stack. So this is very nice if you are in trouble and you just need a little bit of that extra life back. You can use your Fargazer or one of your or your other mod. Regenerate health right away and it's going to come in handy. So I'm also with the... I have the basic Relic Dragon Heart. The reason being... I don't have the Void Heart yet. That's the one I'm looking for, and I'm waiting to get that. Once I have that, I'll swap that out. So you can definitely do that once that does happen. But for me, that's why I stuck with the Dragon Heart for now. I have the Range Damage Mod, Cracked Armor Effectiveness, and then uh, Mod Damage as well as my three items on the Dragon Heart as well. Then finally, I am running the Radiant Helmet armor and leg armor these the radiant set is very nice it's heavier so i know there's a lot of people who are veterans of remnant who <laughs> might not want a heavy set but i've found personally as somebody who struggles to uh, effectively hit those immunity frames all the time having that extra resistance with a heavier armor set works out better for me because oftentimes what I was finding is I was dodging too fast when, when an enemy was charging an attack. And so I just, that's why I settled on a heavy set. Although I will probably change that around as I get different sets. If you don't have that, I believe that's from the uh, pre-order bonus. So if you don't have that set, you can also get the Fey Royale set. That the Fey Royal set, this set is also very good and can help you out tremendously if you like those heavy armor sets, but that can be pretty flexible. As far as the traits go, I really put a lot of my traits into the not only the damage resistance, so I have Bark Skin, which is a big damage resistance there. I also have uh, Blood Bond, Archetype Summons, Absorb Damage taken by the caster, and then because of that, I had Rugged increases the health of Archetype Summons by 10%. That way, they take a lot of the damage that's intended for me and I can uh, they also stay alive much much easier I also have expertise max which is increased or uh, minus 20% skill cooldown as well as the spirit trait which are yeah trait which has increases mod power generation by 20% so all of those come in handy and then the one that's really nice is the one from the fortify archetype trait from the engineer Plus 50% armor effectiveness. This is another reason why I like running a heavier armor set. Because having fortify means my armor is much more effective. Even though it is a heavy armor set. And it's going to slow me down just a little bit. So that's really where this build shines. I, I love it. I've used it in every type of content so far. I'm going to take it into the next difficulty level. I haven't tested it out yet. But I'm doing that here shortly. I wanted to get this video out though. If there's anybody that's struggling with the game. Wants a build that can help them with their survivability. This is the one and I highly recommend it. My name is Jopa. I hope you have a good one. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. Shows you want to see more Remnant 2 content from me going forward. I hope you have a good one. I'll catch you all later.